um, sitting down already, but we'll just give you a uh, four to five hour warning that we'll start at six o'clock on the dock. Like, um, we got checked by legal and stuff, he said. So, the only thing is, I think we can run it with like any legal and intake. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, I think the clock is ticked to 6 pm, so we will begin. My name is Damien Joe, I'll be your MC for the evening, although it's clearly about all the people off to my right. As we start tonight, we acknowledge the Bungalow people, the traditional owners of the land on which we meet today, and pay our respects to the elders past and present 
and extend that respect to other Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people who are present today. Thank you very much for coming along to meet the candidate evening for the Wilder Council elections. Uh, emergency exit is the door that you came back in, that uh, you entered from, and if you need to go to the toilet during this two hour session, please go back out there and to the right, and my set will direct you to the toilets. Uh, if you weren't aware, tonight's session is also being live streamed through the Council's Facebook page, and of course we have our local TV reporter filming some of this as well. Uh, please be mindful of turning your phones off too if you haven't done that. We have 16 of the 21 candidates here tonight, 19 running for council, uh, council election and two for mayor, so a magnificent spread, but we do have apologies from Peter Klobuchar, Bill Simpson, Paul Handley, Sharon Todd and Zia Westerman. They have uh, sent in their speeches in answer to the question, I'll read those out at the end. So tonight is aimed at allowing you and the community to find out a little bit more about what each of these local candidates for this year's election stand for and their vision for the fine city of Wyala. It's then critical that you then use this information to determine your vote. You can help to decide the future of our city by choosing who represents your community on council for the next four years. And equally as vital is make sure you remember to vote. So make sure you vote with enough time for that envelope to reach the Electoral Commission via post before the November 10 deadline. So posting it on November the 9th won't get there in time. But tonight, each of our candidates will have one minute to answer this question. What is your vision for the city of Wyala and how will you develop this vision for the continued enhancement of the city? They are aware of that question. Our two mayoral candidates will have four minutes each to outline their candidacy, and the other councillor candidates will have two minutes each to outline their candidacy. They'll also be given, and that is an extra time on top of answering the question. So a reminder to the candidates, you'll only be able to speak about your candidacy. We're not going to allow any derogatory marks aimed at fellow candidates or other personal comments, so please stick to the question and the vision you have for way out. I have instructions here that I could actually cut you short if you do actually decide to go off task there. Candidates are going to speak in the order that they are on the ballot list that you would see in the envelope that hopefully you've already been uh, posted, and I'll talk about that more later. The one difference is Matthew Head, one of our candidates who was at work, who will arrive late and he'll join down the end and speak last. Each speaker is going to hear a 30 second warning coming from Michelle. So that is 30 seconds into our, there it is. Can I say to me? No, yeah. I thought I had a time. Um, 30 seconds into the first uh, talk that you do, and then 30 seconds from the end of the second talk. Uh, of course, 30 seconds is still a long time, and there's no punishment at all if you would like to finish early. We will have time for audience Q&A at the end. That's probably going to be the more complex part of my job, depending on how many of you want questions and how many candidates would like to answer. But as we say again at the end, they've been more than open and accessible all the way through this campaign. And so anything not answered tonight, you'll have more of an opportunity to do that anytime if you like. So we're ready to begin. So in the order that we have, it's the first of our mayoral candidate. Mr Antonio will come up and answer the question that they've been given and then can go straight into his four minutes about his overall candidates. So ladies and gentlemen, Tom Antonio. Thank you, Tony. First of all, I want to welcome all the candidates with their hands up. I, I see there's a lot of excellent candidates here and also welcome Bill Stein. It's great to see people put their hands up. And Bill, I wish you all the best. And to all the people here tonight, having time to come out, very important to listen to what we have to offer and hopefully we can turn the city around to a more livable city. My vision for our city is very simple. We need a livable city, we need a beautified city, we need to use the assets that we have and we want to enhance the city that we have. Maritime Museum, we've got an outdoor homestead which has been neglected. It's a very important part of our heritage, our culture, where we've come from. That's been neglected. Aged care, we need to work closely with the aged care people, um, we don't want to end up where we've ended up in the last few years. That was unacceptable. 
We've got the whole lovely lighthouse and the tigers. Many of you have sent the children there. You know what a great asset it is. It's been neglected. I hope with the new council we can turn that around. The leisure centre, I don't need to go into the leisure centre. That needs to be addressed. We can't keep band-aiding the leisure centre. It costs us hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. It's leaking 20,000 litres of water per day. Going into the subsurface, which would damage the infrastructure of the leisure centre. The pool is, is in bad shape. You've got the splash pool, you've got the slide pool, so we need to address that. The way to address that is not banning it, but getting a brand new leisure centre like they have in our campus. We can do that through grant money. Like there's better region funds, but we have to work hard. We have to work with the RDA. The RDA is very, very significant, and we must engage with them. I don't know why we're not in the RDA, but there's seven RDAs in South Australia, and we are the only council that's not part of the RDA. We have to re-engage. We have to be part of that. The Tangara Village, great asset. We've got great opportunities. We need to embrace the Tangara Village. We need to work with those people because they bring people in our community. They travel far and wide. There's crafts there. There's people that have a lot of education in that, in that area. Mount Laurel Homestead, like I said earlier, that is a great asset. I believe that we should have had the pilot or had those council staff engaged in that locality, in the middle of our city, working from Mount Laurel Homestead. There are volunteers there who put their heart and souls in that and go into the Mount Laurel Homestead and they can't continue to do that. We have to invest. We have to work together to make sure we show our culture where we've been and where we're going and where we've come from. And if those people have been down, you can see how important that asset is. We need to work with our hospitals. That's very important. We need to talk to the, the people that work there. We need to engage and we've got to make sure that the doctors that come into our city are looked after. They need to be given the appropriate equipment that they need, and that means by having vehicles that they can use in the park and the car park, they're not allowed to use. Housing trust homes, we've seen them. There's that many housing trust homes around, there are hundreds of them that have been turned up. I'm sure and I'm confident that if we work with the state government, we can bring those back into mainstream and we can house people in. There are people out there that are desperate. There are people living in the streets. We need to engage with the housing trust, with the state government, work with them in a positive way to get those people into those homes. I've, I've got a great vision for the city. I think we need to start to look at our main streets. We need to start beautifying so when people come into Waila, they can see what a great city it is. They can see how beautiful it is, like our foreshore. We've done a lot of work at the foreshore. We're about 10, 15 years behind the mark. How I started the project four years ago, I engaged with the council, I engaged with the CEO, I gave them my opinion as a common person, and look where they are today. If you go to Woodna and have a look what's there, they've got, they've got an outdoor swimming pool, they've got a pump track, population 800 people. We should be in the forefront. We should be leading. We are the second biggest city in South Australia. Why are we lagging behind? We're lagging behind because we haven't got enough pride, I believe. We need to have pride. We need to have commitment. We need to have passion. We need to work. And we need to work collectively as a council, as a United Council. I have what it takes. I've got the attitude to make sure that works. I do it for my family. I do it for my business. And I've done it for 40 years, as a lot of you people have seen. I've got great staff that have worked with my organisation for that period of time. Average life is about 20 years. Now, to have a team like that, you need to have a good leader. And that's what I believe I can contribute to the community. There's just some of the things that I can raise. Where, where do I come from? I came to Wild was like only 19 years of age as a first year apprentice. I had a motorbike accident and I spent six weeks in hospital. I was in basically sedated for five weeks. I had to start my apprenticeship again. I had nothing. I had my car to possess. I built what I've got today by working hard. And working hard, not only for me, but for my family. Addressing our families first, making sure that we spent right, making sure that we didn't overspend. That's what I can do for this council. I don't want to see the rates go up 6.3% again, like they did for seven years in a row. I want to keep the rates down to where they're affordable. That's where they're going to be. And we've got to make sure that we use the grant money that's available from federal and state funds. And we can do that. And I believe that hasn't been done. So thank you very much for listening to tonight. Thank you, Tom.
perfectly timed there. Uh, we realise with the two questions, you may flow into the next question, so uh, ultimately looking out for that last ding of the bell. And just to help any uh, confusion, this thing on my right is the light, this thing on my left is the actual light. Um, let's move straight into our second and final mayoral candidate, uh, introducing Phil Stone. Ladies and gentlemen, my vision for the City of Wild is a simple statement. It's not complicated, it doesn't cover every issue, it's a general direction. Council has a strategic plan already with a clear vision. I don't believe an election has to be seen everything else thrown out. It's a vision I fully support and will use to lead Council. And it's simply that Wild will be a vibrant, attractive city, offering the community a diverse range of sustainable, economic, social, environmental and cultural opportunities. This vision will be achieved by my leadership style of creating a team of elected members and administration that is respectful to each other, cares, works together, works with the community, shows commitment and owns responsibility. When services and projects outweigh available funds, only the team that communicates with the right base to determine your priorities. Where activities are clearly within council responsibilities, I'll expect achievement. Where they're outside council control, I will lead strong advocacy. My vision is from the heart and for the sake of oil. I believe the current council has done, or has been, one of the most united elected bodies for many years. It has gotten things done and has tackled some big issues. Just five examples. The new iconic jetty for all, the design selected by the community. The upgrading of Bennett and Memorial Ovals, bringing for the first time AFL and then SNFL footy to our community. The adoption of the community's foreshore master plan, the community's plan, and it includes, from the outset, a water park. The adoption of a rec centre master plan following consultation. The redevelopment of the airport, not just to be fancy, as some people like to purport, but to comply with federal government security demands. Now, as an aside, in light of the latest unexpected news of the federal security funding being pulled, Council has already taken action calling on the decision to be reversed. Yes, you can always find something that needs to be done. And yes, there is room for improvement. If I have one criticism, it is that in trying to respond to the many expectations of the community, perhaps council has tried to undertake too many projects and provide too many services which have stretched resources and capabilities. As mayor, I will lead a coordinated team of elected members and administration in a way that learns from the past, better explains decisions, and keeps the community well informed, better informed as to what the city can and can't afford. I've said many times that while is on the cusp of an exciting future with the expected hydrogen production proposal, this will mean jobs. We must be ready, but we must do it in an affordable way. The new council will have many, many decisions to make during their term, including the future of the rec centre and the potential of a sporting hub. The implementation of the first stage of the foreshore master plan is long-term development and consideration of a marina master plan. The future is controversial, but the future of the civic building, the temporary relocation of staff and the ultimate long-term decision, the con continuation of negotiations and advocacy for new housing, we know we need it. And the acceptable use of the former school sites to provide benefits to the community. Then, there are those in the community who would like a full size Olympic swimming pool, a completely new rec centre, an additional council run childcare centre, 
all old public toilets were replaced with modern facilities, more free family events, and generally they want it now. The truth is that the city can't afford such a list of projects. So it is vital, vital that we maintain the best possible relationship with state and federal governments to attract as much funding as possible. We need governments to want to work, to want to continue to work with us. I already have that relationship. But I must emphasise, no matter what funding can be won, no government will completely fund a project. Even with external funding, there will always be a financial contribution required from Council. So every project receiving funding will always have an impact on road buyers. Is that the end? Good. Then there are issues outside Council's control, like housing, aged care, health services. That's where Council has an advocacy role. Two final examples. Council has been pushing strongly for a long time with government agencies at ministerial level and the third party developers to invest in wild and new housing. I will continue that push. When the aged care crisis hit Wilder, Council did more than just stand up. Mayor Clare immediately canvassed governments, ministers and local MPs. Council worked tirelessly negotiating and meeting with government and other providers. In four minutes, four minutes, I can't cover everything you would like to hear, but I assure you, I have the drive, I have the dedication, and I will lead a transparent and accountable council. The role of mayor is about the right leadership. I'm ready to provide that leadership to continue giving back to the community that my wife Bronwyn and I call home, the city for which I truly have that passion. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. And now we move into our council. Candidates. So they still answer that same question with one minute, but their description of their overall candidacy is for two, two minutes. So a little bit shorter than our mayoral candidates were. So three minutes in total. So our first uh, council candidate to speak tonight, Hugo Arcabelli. our decisions presented to Council for existing and future services and pledges. I believe in growing our community by supporting local business, local industry and encouraging more to come to Iowa. I love Iowa. I'm always making videos to highlight the best we have and I'm putting it online for my friends and relatives in Adelaide to see and for those I have over, overseas. Now, I have this passion for Wailer to become arguably the best tourist hub on the Air Peninsula. Tourism is a global industry and it's one that we should embrace and fast track to becoming our sought after go to tourist destination. The benefits will be enormous for us. 
It may mean that we might not have to put the rates up so much. I don't know. But the money coming in is what we need. My commitment to you, the people of Wyala, is to engage with you and represent you with total transparency. When I leave the water system here, councillors, in making sound decisions and reflecting community needs, with a focus on health, well-being for all, for our youths having access to good education, well-maintained parks, playgrounds and sporting facilities. For our elderly citizens, I will be their advocate for the best care and quality of life. Helping our handicapped citizens. Little things like lobbying for better access to our parks, sports, schools and shopping centres. I know how important this is for them. My lovely daughter-in-law, mother to my grandchildren, is challenged with MS, multiple sclerosis. I will lobby for more doctors and healthcare professionals and improvements to our hospital. I pledge to work always in your best interest and the best interest of my own. Thank you. Beautifully done. So far, so good with the timing. We appreciate three minutes is relatively quick, but hopefully the candidates can practice that. A short reminder that the question they're answering in their first section is what is the vision for the City of Wyala and how will you develop this vision for the continued enhancement of the city, followed by their overall view of their candidacy. Uh, our next candidate, please welcome Catherine Campbell. Thank you, 
Damien, and, uh, and thank you everyone for being here. This is a fantastic turnout to see the interest of the local council. There is one word that I want you to remember from my talk beyond this evening. This one word is both the solution to our problems and simultaneously the most joyful thing we as human beings can possibly do. And this one word that I want you to consider is imagine. Imagine a community where we treat each other with respect, where we don't seek to take offence nor to be offensive in our communication. Imagine a community who talks about their home city passionately and truthfully. Imagine a community that recognises a challenge and empowers themselves to work together to do what needs to be done. It's great to imagine, Pete, I hear you ask, but it's also necessary to put our feet on the ground and talk about how we can do this. So here are three ways that we can achieve this vision. One, number one, reinvent the culture of Wyala. Empower and reward the community and link business growth to community growth. Let's make it on that first promise. Reinvent the culture of Wyala. I believe it needs to be proactive and positive. And as councillors, we have the opportunity to lead from the front. The way decisions are made, the way discussions are had, and the way we interact with each other has the potential to set the tone for the rest of the community. Do we create a safe space for people to contribute, or are they worried about being deflated from public commentary? Culture is attitude. We need to create a safe space for people to raise their positive voices and promote Wyala in their everyday life. A positive culture can be created through flagship and community-led events, like the Wyala Wellness Weekend, which just recently, in October, was my first step as organiser to initiate this idea. But what about a cultural weekend festival celebrating our cultural and national diversity? Or a connected community event where the business community sleep out to raise money for a second linked event for the less fortunate in that community who are often hungry, cold and lonely? And what about empowering and rewarding the community? Let's give the community the opportunity to make wild better. Let's offer training and incentive to the community. Include the community through transparent decision making. This is achieved through clear and honest communication, even and especially when it's uncomfortable. Acknowledge where things could have been done better. Authenticity is critical. Think global and act local. Let's not wait around for Metro. Yes, we will need grants and those sorts of things, and that's beyond me at this stage, but I'm looking forward to learning. But let's incentivise and create a framework to inspire local creativity and initiative to solve local challenges. What about the award and acknowledgement for the community, for the best kept street, for the friendliest neighbour, for the best collaborative efforts to help the community. To name a few ideas. And am I a dreamer? I hear you ask. You bet I am. Let's link business growth to community growth. Let's welcome new industry and make new business as simple as possible in Wyala. But let's also connect every profit motive with a community motive. When businesses make money here, how are they putting back into our local community? And to wrap things up, as a prospective councillor, I believe the elected members have an opportunity to bring new levels of thinking to the challenges and opportunities that lay ahead for Wyala. I will represent Wyala as a councillor the same way I live my life, with zest, with positivity, with gratitude, with a pride of choices, with fun, and most of all, with optimism for the bright future that Wyala has in front of her. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you very much, Peter. My time here says we are absolutely spot on, so I'm pretty proud of myself, but it's mainly up to you guys sticking to the time. Our next council candidate, David Knox. I'd like to thank everybody for coming. It's good to see so many people here. It really is. Um, Vision is all about collaboration and seeing the vision of the community and the state and federal governments. It's so important. We must work together to achieve them. We must have good relations with the government and our local parliamentarians. And just as importantly, a cohesive council. Put these together, we will achieve the hydrogen outcomes, green skills, schools, housing, including affordable housing. That's so important. For sure, including the water playground, and importantly, we'll grow why other. Council has spent a lot of time getting strategic plan right, and this will need to be reviewed in the light of the new council and importantly review the community consultation. Now, in renominating, I want to do my best to make Wyala prosper. I believe we need to focus on economic development first and foremost. But recreation facilities in the western suburbs are also important. 
as our health and education systems, housing, including affordable, and importantly, job creation for our long term unemployed. I've been a resident of Wild since 1960, parents with £10 bombs, and I guess I came out with them. I attended primary and high school here, and four generations of the family still live in Wyala. I have 25 years' experience as a CEO in local government. I operated my own business for 10 years, and I had five years as a financial counsellor and gambling counsellor. So I know the issues that are evident in Wyala. I have demonstrated I'm not afraid to ask the difficult questions in meetings. Last meeting I asked, what's the back of opening the Full Shore Cafe? What are the owner's intentions for the old section of the Bayview Hotel? That's a very important building. What are the costings, etc., for the foreshore visitor pod staffing? What are the uses for the pod adjacent to the library? What are the dates for the construction of the foreshore hotel? These are all really important questions. Projects and I have played a major role in over the years, including the wetlands, the library, the rec centre, the airport, lighthouse and cottages, the new jetty, the crematorium, the meat marina, and many more. The hydrogen projects will create a new era for Wyala. We need to ensure that we have jobs for residents, appropriate training and housing. Council will need strong leadership to maximise the opportunities that will arise. I have served on two regional economic development boards for a total of 17 years, and for the Wyala board I was made a life member. As a volunteer, I've chaired various committees and boards, including Wyala Age Care, Tertiary Education, and Triple Y at the Indy Radio Station, where I'm an answer. I serve in school councils, sporting clubs and associations as an office bearer. The new council is going to have to reel in costs. Council have been hit by a number of legacy issues from previous administrations. And then there are city building issues and the redevelopment of the airport, which has been touched on by another speaker. Tough decisions will need to be made. At the same time, we need flexibility in our workforce to tackle issues such as mining and weed control. The drive around the western suburbs shows we are not keeping pace particularly in regard to footpaths. Other issues for a while, well, there are many other issues, the city of Lake and high schools, the state government has said we continue maintenance. I believe we need a retirement to lift up the and housing as well. Um, and for all reasons, a bit to downsize. Um, I also think we need to have more events in Wyala. It hurts me that we see corn and flea, obviously in block events particularly, but we don't get it here. We should be getting it here, and do bring people out the Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Big round of applause for our next speaker and council candidate, Philip Babbage. Good evening, everyone. It's great to see everyone here this evening. As third generation living in Wyal, my birthplace, I experienced the thrill of Wyal as a bustling city with around 32,000 residents thriving business, shipyards, mining and steel production. I feel that we in Wyala are, without doubt, facing a new era with new challenges. For many years, we were able to ride this great era of productivity, hugely due to the one company which was responsible for founding Wyala. Name changes withstanding, our steel works are still of enormous significance to the viability of our city today. I do believe, however, that we have all realised how circumstances can change as part of the global community, and very quickly. It only makes good sense to build on this great success and do all we can to diversify our industry, business and its sustainability today. I think we will do well to remember that diversity is not only necessary for business and industry, this is also necessary for the diversity of cultures, religion, volunteering, education, caring for our elderly, and the preservation of cultural and heritage sites. With an open mind to new and exciting, feasible and realistic business and industry opportunities for our city. This is a vision which I believe is honourable, sustainable and possible. As a caveat here, it needs to be remembered that a councillor on their own cannot make this vision possible. It requires working as part of a team on and with our council, which should include as much input from our community as possible in which we serve. I am a proud third generation Wyala resident and homeowner, 
and as a teen into adult years, I've been in Wyala, a member of the South Asian Army Band, served on ambulance, Cub Scouts, and during 1985, was a founding member lobbying for community radio in Wyala as a teenager of 18 or 19 years of age. I know about full poppy syndrome and the huge challenges people, young people have in achieving projects and initiating new and important ideas. I've worked at the steelworks, experiencing the day-to-day -day life of a steelworker. My employment history includes a career as a full-time emergency ambulance officer in both Adelaide and Wyala, nursing at Wyala Hospital and coordinator for the Health and Safety Division, Human uh, uh, HRD, Victoria Police. As part of my Christian faith, I support both the community work and social outreach programs of our church groups. I believe inclusion, the participation of cultures and religion, enhances the richness of the community and are vital in moving into the future. And just to finish up here, just briefly. I wish to bring my experience, skill, and all my community feedback to Council if elected. Please allow me to serve on Council and further support the community which means so much to us all. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. Please welcome to the podium our next council candidate, Mark Inglis. Thank you, Damien, and welcome everybody. It's good to see you turned out tonight, so um, well done. Um, my vision for Wire, you know, I've lived here for over 50 years myself. Um, I cannot look on him, but um, so, you know. While it's kind of, you know, we've had some tough times and we've had some good times, but while the people are resilient, um, as people realise, you know, the world economics is turning upside down a little bit at present, so going forward, you know, we don't have to attract new industries, and hydrogen is the future for all of us, I think. Mean, it's a great opportunity, not only is the, the Melbourne Houses power station that's been projected now, so stuff with the hydrogen hub out there, it's in the solar farms and renewable energy, so every new opportunity comes along, we're going to have to grab. You know, tourism is a massive thing for our city as well, in the cuttlefish. Um, people came to the, the boat tours and followed the region over the summer period, uh, through the winter, it was just sensational if you ever were out there. The amount of people that came in here, we need to somehow catch to get those people coming to sit and spend money here. Um, I believe we need to have a stronger take from what we've got. You know, I coach student footy, when you talk to the kids, they've got to go to Adelaide, go to the technical trade school. Our TAFE college here is underutilised, it needs a lot of money spent on it, and not only TAFE, it's that's the NSA, so we need to give our kids an opportunity to be able to, to come here, do, to have their apprenticeships here without having the trouble to do that. Housing, we need better housing than what we've got now, we need private housing for people with bottom rent, so we need social housing for people, you know, just, like some of the other people have touched on, you know, housing is going to be such a positive and a big thing going forward, and if we're going to have new, new industries come to town, and tourism, you know, all the, all the hotels and that, and all accommodation every month and we fall, so we have to have a plan for that going forward as a council. Um, infrastructure upgrades are super important. I know some people think, you know, you can't spend money here. You've got to keep spending money and improving. We can improve better than over Memorial Oval. Now, I see the junior soccer guys, you know, they're stuck over here in our high school and they don't know what the future are. And the future for our kids, you know, it's sport, you need infrastructure. You need to upgrade it. You need to get kids involved in sport. If you can get them involved in sport, I believe it makes them better people, gets them out, gets them engaged. They won't spend so much time. And our kids are our future. You know, we want to bring you jobs and opportunities. We need to provide opportunities for these kids and encourage them to stay here and live here as we go on. I have a real passion for the open spaces, our parks and gardens, you know, the wetlands, a fantastic civic park sensation, Adelaide right Gardens, the foreshore, Wilson Park. You know, I think the current council's got a fantastic job in all that open space for it. And we've all been through COVID. Everybody talked to you says the great thing that they did after getting into COVID is getting back out into the fresh air and enjoying their parks. Now, infrastructure needs to be kept open. We've got to keep improving. Everybody deserves everything that needs around the town. It's a big city. It needs a lot of money to keep it running. So we need to be very careful about how we spend our money. Without, you know, you, you do have to spend money. To keep the city, it's a big city, it needs to keep going, but we need to be a bit smart about how we do that. Um, education's important, and like I said, TAFE, 
the uni school isn't diversified enough, are we getting the best results? Health, mental health. Now, there's many things you can spend money on, but you know, our new council needs to be together. We need to think about things, prioritise things, go through a strategic plan that's already in place, push the good stuff, renegotiate the stuff that we're not quite sure about, but more importantly, you know, what happens in the next four years, I think, is going to set well up for the next 25 years. So it's very important as a council that anybody gets elected, we all need to work together to make sure that that vision can be enacted. We all work together towards that, because like I said, you know, the next 25 years, we've got a great opportunity to do the stuff that's going to be going on around here, so it's important that we, as I say, seize the day, move forward, have a united council, everybody gets on well, and have some respect and integrity for everybody involved. You know, public life's not for everybody, and obviously you see social media, there's a few cheap shots out from people. So just be respectful to people. You know, people are going to put their hand up and have a go, respect the position, engage with them, and hopefully we'll have a, we'll, have a, we'll get a great council elected, and we'll do a great thing for our city, so thank you. Thank you, Mark. They're actually exactly halfway through our uh, candidates, so it's a permanent time for me to remind everyone about the ballot papers again. So when you get home tonight, this particular group, apart from ringing up your friends and reminding them, try not to post those votes off tomorrow. We can put them in the uh, post box tonight. Now, if you haven't already see, received your ballot papers or they've gone missing or they've been ripped, etc., go to the Wilder Council's website. You'll be able to find the link to the electoral count, uh, electoral Council of South Australia, Commission of South Australia, and they'll be able to sort you out with a replacement one or why you haven't got yours. The last day you can actually apply for a replacement voting process is 5 pm on Thursday, the 3rd of November. Remembering you then still need time for that to be posted to arrive on time. So, moving on with our candidates, please give a round of applause for our second half, Amanda Kelly.
and attracting visitors to Wyala. I'm a hard worker, a team player. I will commit to offering fresh ideas and a modern perspective to promote and enhance the Wyala brand. I'm eager to be the voice of for the people of Wyala, encourage community consultation and timely decision making. I believe that when we all work together, we can achieve great things. Please welcome for our next councillor candidate, Fiona Mom. streets and open spaces. A city where our children don't have to leave for educational work. A city with an events program that appeals to tourists and locals. A city that embraces and actively attracts tourists. A city that provides health services to meet our residents' needs. And a city, city that actively engages the community. The delivery of this vision will start with the consideration of council's strategic plan. Local government has traditionally struggled to get community engagement on this document, which is Council's key direction document. We need to think differently about how to get input from as many people as possible to ensure everyone that wishes to have a voice in guiding our future can have their say and be heard. My family moved to Wyala when I was five. Although I was not born here, I do and will always class Wyala as my home. I have a wonderful supportive partner, Chris, Two children, Zach and Trinity, and we are homeowners in Wyala. Putting my hand up to run for a seat in this election was not an easy decision. However, I have decided that I am no longer willing to stand by and be passive about the future of Wyala and am ready to play an active role. <laughs> I'm a firm believer in giving back to our community and have been an active volunteer for local organisations such as Triple Y, Wyala Players and The Wyala Show. I have lived and breathed local government for the past seven years. I have experienced the industry as a ratepayer, as an employee of the Wyala City Council. I take an active interest in the council meeting processes and engage with local councillors and city-based councillors by virtue of my partner's involvement in local government. Following my experiences with the COVID pandemic, I started my own business providing administration and marketing services. All these experiences have combined to give me the knowledge and insight to be an extremely effective elected member. I understand that council needs a certain amount of great revenue to deliver services to the community, but we must have regard for people's ability to afford the rating levels that are set. Council needs to focus on using technology and innovation to enable service delivery while keeping rate rises within the levels supported by our community. In terms of the presentation of our city, more needs to be done. For too long, many areas have been overlooked for the more high-profile areas. Many of the parks, reserves, verges and general landscaping around areas such as Wyla Stewart have been neglected. We need to ensure Wyla is treated as a whole and not cemented in our approach. I would love the opportunity to play a more direct role in the future of Wyla. If you can support me as one of your representatives, I will work tirelessly to ensure that together we can provide a positive future for Wyla. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Fiona. Our next candidate, please welcome to the podium, Jane Owens. It has already started and I would be very disappointed if it didn't go forward. 
To achieve this, we would need to continue to encourage more initiatives like the Hydrogen Hub and the Coltana Training and Redevelopment. We will need to continue to work collaboratively with industry, both and state and federal governments. We have seen recent initiatives like the upgrade to the airport. We have the air show coming here next week with the potential to be bigger and better next year. We need more big events coming to Wyala. The new Wyala Secondary College. This is a wonderful building. And just this week, Sarah Holmes, who built it, won an award for the Wyala School. And summing up, the previous council have done a marvellous job in the past four years. And I hope, along with my future fellow councillors, to, co con to continue working collaboratively, not only with them as a team member, but also the residents of the city of Wyala. Now, last week, we all, the girls all did this last week for EW for Enterprising Women. I came to Wyala in 1991 with my husband and my two children, my two sons. And Wyala has been good to us. We've become citizens, Australian citizens. We have all been successful in our chosen careers. My sons are married to two wonderful, beautiful, strong women, and I have no favourites. Wyala has been good to us. After coming to Wyala, I went back to studying and achieved a diploma in management and leadership in community services and also training and assessment. I've also worked in the health, I've always worked in the health field. In Wyala, I have worked in the, commu in the community, in aged care in di and disability services. I've also worked in retail and education. I have volunteered all my adult life. I'm a proud member of the Rotary Club of Wyala, which has afforded me the opportunity to be the district governor. Now, the district governor for our district covers all the way from Alice Springs, down to Port Lincoln, and everything in between. Um, the one proud thing I have about being a district governor, there's only been three district governors from Wyala, and I am the first woman, the last district governor, and the first woman to be it. I am an executive member of EW, and currently the secretary of the Wyala Business and Tourism, and socially I play golf, and I love crosswords. Do I, have, do I have what it takes to be a counsellor? I sincerely think I have the skills and the background to do so. Thank you. Thank you, Joan. Up next, as we move towards the end of our group, please welcome Sandra Walsh. present what our vision was. Mine's going to be a little bit different and I think it's because of my background. My vision for Wyala is one of resilience. I moved here in about 95, moved away again for work and moved back in 2000. And I feel like we've been on a roller coaster. We can't stop the roller coaster, but we can prepare for it and we can build for it. So my vision is one of resilience, economic, social and environmental. We'll have economic resi resilience as a result of the diversified economy. We won't just be reliant on heavy industry. True diversification means our econ economies from multiple sources, growing sectors and markets. We should look at ecotourism and edutourism, something that I haven't heard before. We will be socially resilient. People will feel valued, included and safe. Decisions will be made with the community in mind. In technology, they call it end user engagement. This means that the people who are going to use something are involved from the start and throughout the process. Consultation is genuine, authentic, and recognizing, recognizes the importance of people involved throughout every stage. We will be environmentally resilient. We'll have spaces that are inviting for people and fit for purpose. We'll have roads that don't flood with five miles of rain. Coming from North Queensland, I know that's achievable. We'll have spaces so that people don't have to be homeless. In 
not treat homeless, and that people can make housing choices that are appropriate for them in their stage of life. Wales will be resilient, be prepared for whatever comes our way, and we will be the place where people want to be. That is my vision. Okay, a candidate, candidacy. I don't like talking about myself. So really briefly, I work at Uni SA, I've been there about 17 years. I've got two kids, a boy and a girl. They drive me up the wall and I love them dearly. My partner is local. Um, we met on holidays when I was in camp, when he was in camp, I was living there. And of course one of us had to move. So somehow the logical decision was that I moved to Wyala. And I'm still here. I'm actually what you want. You want to attract people. So for me, social, council is a social endeavour not just an economic one. Sound judgments and decisions are made with due diligence and that they're crucial, but our people are our measure of success. Gandhi once said, the true measure of any society can be found in how it treats its most vulnerable members. Youth homelessness has been raised with me as an issue and I realise I sat in a position of privilege. Young people can't find shelter in my arm. And then we have to send them to communities that actually have youth shelters. This is not on. Council should partner with local NGOs to help establish one here so that young people don't have to leave their support networks, schools, or friends, just to have a roof over their head. And we need to seriously consider programs of urban renewal. I heard um, my own Stewart referred to as bombs. And for me, that's really disappointing because there's a thing called a self-fulfilling prophecy. What you say you are is what you're going to become. So I think we need to change our attitude. For over 65s, we do need more housing options, retirement and downsizing, and for those who need additional care, aged care facilities. But we have to have staff to fill those facilities. Infrastructure is one thing, people are something different. I'm a rural health researcher, so I know that a key factor in attracting and retaining health professionals is feeling a sense of belonging in the community. And for this, we need to build the social fabric. Part of this is volunteer, supporting the volunteer sector who provide hundreds of hours of work each, each week into Wyala. So coming from North Queensland, I do think I see things a little bit differently. Wyala is the best, best kept secret in pretty much all of Australia. I think we need to view ourselves as much more than, in, than an industrial town to start realising our potential. We have opportunities for eco and edu tourism. And that's based on our natural environment, not anything that we build. It is something that is already here. Working with universities nationally and internationally, we can bring students here to do intensive units. For every dollar that we put into that, they will bring us three to five. That's it. Appreciate you having me standing over you at the back there. I want to make sure other people hurry up and move on. <laughs> Tammy Pond, welcome to the stage. Services in this town, how people pull together 
and people are amazing. If anyone needs help, we do, we support each other, we know where to find it, but we need to keep those services here relevant and inform people where they can get those services. Through my career as an educator, I have seen a lot of um, issues as well that we need to um, address, such as health, youth justice, and poverty. Through my time at Stuart High, uh, I was a wellbeing officer. It was very much an eye-opening career for me. And um, I did start to lose faith a little bit. But then, we built a community where the services are here, you need to know where they are. Once all those connections were made, and we had amazing groups such as Hope Collective, come along and bring all the services together that's when we started working as a team and not just as silos standing alongside each other. When we work as a team, we can make the dream work. And that is what we need to do. We need a, a, sorry, an elected body that are diverse, but can be respectful and work together. And, and I actually encourage everyone to have a really good look at everyone's bios and all of our write-ups. We do need diversity, we need different skills sitting around. And in the last four years, as an elected member, I feel that I have gained a lot of skills, I've gained a lot of confidence, and I would love to continue to work for the community. I'm a die-hard volunteer. I'm the current president of the Wara Show, and I have been for 10 years. Um, I volunteer for a, a, a lot of different community groups in lots of different areas, because I like to keep connected with the community. I actually invite you to come and connect with me afterwards. If you don't know me, if you want to know a bit more, I'm a very social person, I like to connect. So please come up, ask me anything, and I'd like to, yeah, just please vote. And we've got some amazing people here to choose from. Have your say. Thank you. Thank you, Tammy. Our uh, third to last speaker, say good evening to Adrian Thompson.
so that we can be prepared for what comes ahead. The hydrogen project is obviously the future. It's going to, and it gives our town an opportunity to be part of the future. Um, I personally believe that hydrogen is going to provide plenty of opportunities. Um, I didn't buy anything deliberately because I'm on the spec for the heart. So hopefully, if I get the opportunity to be a councillor, I can prove to you people that I'm worth the bet. Thank you very much. Thank you, Adrian. Up next, Tim Brewer. Thank you, Tim. Been here and done this many times, still shitting myself. Uh, firstly, I've got to acknowledge that we meet here tonight on Bungalow land. I acknowledge the deep connection the Bungalow people have to this land and pay my respects to their, their leaders, past, present, and emerging. And I also extend that respect to other um, people of Aboriginal descent um, here with us tonight. Um, my name's Tim Brewer. I've lived in Wild for 45 years and love this community. My family's made their home here now for four generations. I'm asking the wider community to elect me to council because I believe I have the skills, experience and positive attitude to effectively re represent my community on wider council. I've previously served on wider council for eight years. I've worked for almost 10 years in the seafood industry as a manager in Wyala. I've worked for seven years managing a business in the disability sector and I'm currently working for the last five years as a team leader in the conservation and land management field. Prior to all this, I also completed an electrical apprenticeship at the Wireless Steelworks. I think this experience has given me a broad understanding of the issues facing our community and has helped me to gain a good understanding of working and communicating with people, has given me good financial management skills and an ability to problem solve. These skills will enable to be a good, to be a good considered decision maker on why our council is elected. I've also had the opportunity, being a manager, to work on the big picture within a workplace. This is important as a councillor, as a major role for elected members is to build the vision and direction that council and community is working towards. If elected to our council, you can count on me to be honest, to listen, and not be shy in putting forward my opinions in the chamber. I'll work hard for this community as I have done previously, and I will respect and work collaboratively with other elected members, the community, and state and federal governments. Good outcomes come from partnerships, not cheap headline grabs. I believe in being kind to people, helping to improve the lives of those in our community who need our help, and I value our unique environment in my life. I believe we need to protect what we have, but also to celebrate our place in the world. We have something really special here in Wyala, and I think we don't make the most of that. Lastly, I believe we should be bold with our vision and planning for our city, and really take advantage of the exciting times ahead for this community of Wyala. I want to say I've been around long enough to know that making bold statements about what I will do or will not do doesn't really mean anything. The way to get things done in council is by working hard and working together. My vision for Wyala is to be a modern, exciting city where families have an opportunity to make a good life for themselves and their children. I was going to try and beat that bell, but I've just got a couple of last things to say. So we need to be a place where we can access good health, education and social opportunities and a community that works together to improve all our lives. I'd love to see a thriving arts, sporting and hospitality scene where a real buzz can be felt by community members and visitors to our city. We need to work hard to diversify our economy and encourage investment in a range of businesses, industries and tourism. I think the best way forward with this is through public-private partnerships. We all need to work together, all levels of government and the private sector, as well as community, to make things happen in our region. We need to, the key to this is to be able to attract people to, to our city, 
be a health and other professional skilled labour and trades, as well as a range of other workers, educators and potential business investors. I think we've got some low-hanging fruit we can go for in Lyle as far as making our city more attractive and livable, and that includes tidying up our streets and giving, giving our streets a facelift. Take a look at our main roads in the centre of our town. There are some great places here, but there's plenty of opportunity. Thank you, Tim. And last but definitely not least, uh, remembering we did this one slightly out of order, welcome Matthew Head. Thank you, Matthew. Good evening, everybody. Um, for those who know me, know that I've normally got a lot on the clock for hours, but spotlighting the podium, it's like too much shit myself. But I'm going to make this quite brief and easy. Um, so good evening for those who do not know me, my name is Matthew Head, and please firstly let me uh, um, allow myself to apologise for the one late due to prior work commitments. I want to thank everyone for taking the time to attend this evening. I've nominated myself to become an elected member because people such as myself have not really been represented on council before. I want to work for the council that is practical, honest, transparent, and that follows through with its commitments. I want to be part of a council that advocates for projects, infrastructure, and spending on things the community needs that are sustainable and not things that just look good. <clears throat> I have no specific agenda other than to listen to the people, to be informed, make judgment and decisions based on the community's needs. I will admit that I'm not up to date with everything that's been going on in the city over the last past few years. I was born and grew up in Wiley and was quite involved in the community through employment and being part of community events. But I moved away from Wiley and the person that returned was not the same person who left. Facing, addiction, facing issues of addiction, domestic violence, homelessness, and the law. I've spent the last few years having to rebuild my life, <clears throat> repairing my health, my relationships, my re reputation, my mental health. I stand for you a much better and more rounded version of the person many of you have been me before. I do not believe that my well-being uh, Sorry, that my being well educated. That's the only good one, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, having very successful careers in life, um, being an executive on a committee, being on a board, it's, it's not what will make me a good counsellor. It's the journey of my recovery and the first hand knowing what it's like to live in poverty, to sleep in a public toilet, to get out of where you want to sit, um, and so on, to have uh, addiction impair your thoughts and decisions to be debilitated and un by undiagnosed or untreated mental health issues, spend time in the cells, and many, many more things that, um, but more than anything, to destroy your own life and upset those around you actually care. <clears throat> Through help from my family, my doctors, financial counselling, mental health appointments, drug and alcohol counselling, various local agencies and heaps of local people. I've been able to rebuild my life and continue that positive journey today. I want to represent for those people that feel they have no voice and for those who feel they are not represented. I am not able to, I'm not able to stand here and make promises with specifics of, uh, about items about what I will do and what I will not do if elected to council because I have no idea and I've never been in that position before. But what I can say and what I can promise is that like everything that I have done on this journey, I'll give it 100%. I will be honest, I will listen, and I will represent with both dignity and respect the entire community. Thank you. Thank you, Matthew. Now, there were some candidates that uh, weren't able to come and they were given the opportunity to send in a spiel instead. And so I've got the privilege of reading that out. And I'm reading it for the first time right here. So let's see how that goes. You need to imagine I am the person I'm reading out. So if you don't like it, it's not my fault. This is Bill Simpson. So Bill's one of your candidates. Bill's vision for Wyala is a pretty simple one. Everyone here at home will have some sort of wish list that will make Wyala a more attractive place to live for our residents and somewhere that tourists will want to visit. All of the plans and visions are dependent on one important commodity, funding. We all know that to deliver on all the plans, refurbishment and rebuilds required cannot be achieved with our existing 
in ratepayers and in the short term with the pressure of the state and federal governments are under with the various problems not only in SA but elsewhere. So I think relying on grants, etc., in the short term is wishful thinking. Even if the governments do make some funds available, it's half of what's required. So a $20 million project will probably cost us $10 million. The advantage Wyo has over the rest of the towns and the cities is this hydrogen hub. We as a community were extremely lucky that Mayor Claire and our CEO Justin developed a great working relationship early in the discussion stages, which I'm sure helped in no small way with the decisions made in our favour. You would have read in the media the interest in hydrogen development from various companies in Japan and South Korea. We are sitting on the cusp of Wyo moving forward in the next two to three years. A huge growth in population, workforce, families, and obviously housing. Add to that the overseas companies wanting to make Wyala the place to live for their staff and others. Remember the larger our population is the rate requirements reduces and the more companies involved in the projects increases our ability to be self-sufficient. It wasn't that long ago that we introduced the big reveal. That wasn't revealed, what wasn't revealed was that it was very much a 15 to 20 year long term plan that needed too many factors in place for it to work. Now with the hydrogen hub plans in place, we might even see GFG take advantage of the reduced power costs that that 15 to 20 years may now become five to 10 years. That, ladies and gentlemen, is my, Bill's, long-term vision for our wonderful city. And if he's re-elected, I will continue to put Wyler's interests first in any decisions that are made. Thank you, Bill. Give Bill a round of applause. This is Zia Westerman's uh, reply. Zia's vision for Wyala is to create an environment where everyone feels safe to openly communicate their thoughts, feelings and ideas. A place where you feel safe, confident and get out and about to enjoy what our beautiful town has to offer. A place where you feel included and valued within our community. I want Wyala to be a place that we can all be proud to call our home while also becoming more attractive and inviting to visitors and for people to come for a holiday and decide to never leave. I want people to continue to live here through all stages of life. I want to help pave the way for future opportunities for people's lives. I'm not afraid to side with the minority to help those too frightened or unable to voice their needs or concerns. I believe that even the quietest voices deserve the right to be heard. I will strive for the continued activation of not just the Wyla foreshore, but for the rest of Wyla to ensure that no one is left behind. I will stand up for better communication, more accommodation, continue the growth of our community. I will also promote diversity and advocate for the inclusion for all people of all ages and all abilities. Thank you, Zia. And finally, from Sharon Todd. My vision is to see Wyala flourish as a tourist destination, a place to work and importantly as a place to live. I'd like to see Wyala residents enjoy the wide and varied range of activities and facilities in their own town. Small, small businesses that are growing and thriving alongside the larger franchises and industries. Wyala will become a town spoken about with pride, enthusiasm and positivity by visitors and residents alike. Ongoing consultation with our community, exploring opportunities at state and federal levels, engaging in conversations with investors and businesses will all form part of the ongoing plan to be, bring my vision to life. I would commit to working consistently and strategically for the continued benefit of our community as opportunities and needs evolve and change. Council and councillors need to involve and change to remain relevant, approachable, and always walking to, working towards the best outcomes for our city while keeping transparent and integrity at the forefront of our minds. Thank you, Sharon. And that probably comes to the more complex part of the evening, the public question time. So at a moment, we'll invite uh, members of the audience to ask questions. I think we have a roving mic that will go around. Uh, we won't ask the, the candidates here, you should be able to talk where you are. We're in a small room. If you really feel you need to come over here, you can. 
If you do have a question and you wanted to aim at a specific candidate, then please name the candidate. Otherwise, a candidate may choose to put their hand up to answer. Don't feel, candidates, that you have to answer at all. Um, you may choose the, the old wisdom of um, sort of them never open their mouth, etc., etc. However, we do need to keep your time brief. So, whatever complex question you get, we're going to try and stick to a one-minute answer. And I think the audience will respect that. We may only have time for a few questions, and we do need to make sure we are out of here uh, at 8 o'clock on the dot. And as I'll probably repeat at the end, they'll be more than happy to hang around for a few moments outside, and you'll be able to contact them as well. And I do need to finish at the end with some reminders about IT. So, who has a question for our esteemed candidates? Over to the far side, right over there, Michelle. Sure, we'll oh, let's see. Thank you. G'day, now I'm going to be as brief as possible. Sorry, I've got a loud voice. Look, um, everything looks nice here, but no one is talking about uh, the 10,000 drug addicts that are out there in Wyala because the police are only finding the uh, people uh, that buy the stuff, not actually dealing with the, uh, the dealers. Now, the, we need a Lord Mayor that is going to say to the state government, this is absolute, you know, you know it, it can't happen. We have got people out there, domestic violence being beaten up, we've got people going crazy. I've been home invaded twice, I've had my door kicked in, I've put up security cameras to stop this, and a 14-year-old Aboriginal girl comes along with a fifty dollar note trying to buy ice off because she thought I was a bloody dealer. Now you people need to do something about this. Forget the cuttlefish, forget the bloody jetty, do something about the ice in this town. Nice and sweet. Right. So we're only going to Lord Mayor level yet, but uh, one of our more rural candidates, uh, Tom, if you'd like, you've got a minute to give a brief response. I share your concern. Um, I think we've all been in that situation sometimes. How many? My wife is petrified of working in the video shop. We have a drug house directly across the road. If you stood in our video shop, you'll see them like ants going in and out every day. I have reported to the superintendent. I've discussed it with the council, and I agree with you. Full on deaf ears. I can assure you, elected, I will stand up for you and the community to do something about the drug abuse. The police, the police have been to this house many times, but the answer we keep coming back is they need to have the evidence. What evidence do you need when our camera is ripped off our roof that faces a house? Happened to me. That sees them going in and every day. I still can't understand why this continues to happen to the day. You're all welcome to come and have a look. You can see it happening continually. So I agree, something needs to be done. So if I'm elected, I can assure you, as I've done before, I listen, I care, and I do get them drunk, and I will do something about it. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Bill, is the other mayoral candidate? Yeah. It's certainly an aspect that's on my list already. As mayor, I will be having as one of my priorities on a briefing from our police force. I have a personal view plus information from others. I believe proactive policing died many years ago. Doesn't matter what hour of the day you go past the police station, you will see a line of cars. Now all right, it's a, an exchange, a swap over at shift time. But it is an issue that I believe has been pushed under the carpet. I believe budgets comes into it and we as a community, it's not just us, if we leave, I would expect the community to be with us and making life difficult. Or say, hold with the greatest respect to them, this issue, you hear around town, everybody knows where to get drugs, but it seems safe or done. But that is one I think. As mayor, I have got a list of briefings I want from various areas. Housing, health, and the police. Thanks, man. Good. Thank you for both. Thank you. Thank Commodores are they uh, turning up in the driveway for 10 minutes?
that's, that's, that's still not even that's, right. anyhow that's not what, what the point I want to make here. I think what we need to do in this community is start to have a really close look and address the underlying issues that drive crime, drug and alcohol addiction, domestic violence, these sort of things within our community. And that, that's where the real answers lie. Um, every police force, every community has the same issues and, and it's not a simple answer to, to, to get to. So, you know, that, that social equity and justice question and support and help with people that need help, I believe, is what is the real um, underlying issue that needs to be addressed. Thank you. When I was growing up in Wyoming, there was things to do. There was things to do and I knew that I would get a job and everyone in my family was going to get a job. The, the unis had engineering courses. People could go there and become an engineer. Now what can they go there? I'm sorry. I know we need social workers, but we need more than social workers. We are importing engineers to the steelworks. Now we keep saying, it goes on about tourism being our saviour. But what about the education? When I raised my children, I knew they could get a job. Now I have another lot of kids. I'm contemplating leaving Wyala because what's going to happen to them? We talk about the hydrogen engine is going to save us. Where are we going to get the people who are going to work here? Because most of the people who work at that mine, at that mine still will, and the mine, they're FIFO. Their money isn't spent in this town. They live in houses, five or six of them then they swap out another five or six of them. That money goes back to another town. It doesn't come to our town. It doesn't support our doctors. It doesn't support our health system. It doesn't support our shops. And it doesn't support our schools. Now, why should people come here to school? I'm fortunate. I send my kids to a private school. Many people can't afford that. But I deal with people who need to come and work here. Why would they want to bring their teenage kids here What's for them? What's for them to do on the weekend? What's for them to go to school? What education are they going to get? And there's only one school that's not a private school that they can go to. And what reputation has it got? So I think we, we're after the question around the... Well, I think you summed it up at the end there about the opportunities for children to stay. Hand up down there. Sorry, I can't see. Wait for the microphone. Just mindful of the uh, online audience. Can't hear everyone now. So I'll take on the question about higher education because I've worked at the university for about 17 years. So engineering actually came back to the university. The problem was we couldn't get the enrolment quota essentially. So it wasn't viable. Now, this is not because we weren't producing students that wanted to study engineering. It was actually that people were bypassing the Wyala campus to go to Adelaide. So I think we actually need to think about how we invest in our own facilities. So I know that there are people who are studying social work in Adelaide. You've got a really good program here. So start thinking, we take it so much for granted what is already here. And we, I'm going to throw it out there, we often whinge about what we don't have. And that's at the detriment of appreciating what we do. So I think like, that's just on the higher education stuff. I actually get your point about young people and things to do because I've got two young people of my own. So I think that's something that council can definitely address. Thank you, Sandra. <laughs> Just uh, mind you, we can't always see with the, the um, online, so um, I'll just, yep, you can go for that, uh, Peter. Now, I guess perhaps just building on the higher education side of things or, or taking it aside to that is really challenging the community in a positive way to create some, some ideas and to put some events together that are going to keep them attracted uh, to stay in Wyala. Uh, the, the flying flyouts of an arrangement and the people that are not spending that money in Wyala, I think it's the creative challenge that, that we all have together, um, not just to look at, at one mind or, or nine minds at what can we do, but as a collective group, how can we make living in Wyala even more attractive? And I think it comes down to a number of the things that we've mentioned today, and that certainly whoever's elected is going to do it the best they possibly can, but it's really that collaborative effort, I think, between the community and those that the community are voting in to represent them, to put those ideas forward. There's only nine or 10 people sitting around that table, but it's really looking to everyone here, what can we do collectively to try and maintain and keep people and draw people to Wales? 
Thank you, Peter. Oh, we'll move on to the next question. I'm going to feel a little bit. We're going to have 95 answers here and 95 others. So we'll, just, we'll go to the next question. We might better come back to that if there's no others right now. Any hands up? To, I'm mindful. So, Phil, we'll go straight back to you on that. Go, Phil. Oh, yep. I think with the issues that have just been raised in, what, two or three speakers, it really shows how local government, the expectations of local government, are vastly different now than they used to be. And I think it's a challenge with Wyland Council, as it is with any other local government, we have to adopt more of what we never did. The old rates, roads and rubbish was council. Didn't do anything else. And I think there are a lot of social issues now which councils, it's out of our debt because they don't necessarily have the resources or the background. But it is something that is going to have to change even more because that is the community expectation. If I look at all the comments that I've read during the election campaign, the number of matters that have been raised that aren't councils, they're expected to be councils. And I think that's a challenge for us. Forget about the rest of the state. By the council, that is going to be a challenge in the years to come and right now, not putting it off for the future, to acknowledge and see that there are issues which we do have to get involved in and thereby get the community involved in. Because without the community, you won't solve it. Thanks, Phil. You have time again. I don't agree with that. No. I did my apprenticeship in Victoria first year. I came to Wella and I had to redo my apprenticeship because I didn't recognise it. I suffered poorly. So I did my four year term, I did my apprenticeship in the training school in BHP for 12 months. Great training, it was fantastic. Tim Brewer would concur because he probably did the same for nutrition. There were 25 nutritions that were taken in every year. There were plums that were taken in every year. There were boiler makers that were taken in every year. Bill and Turner. We had a Tate College here that educated our kids. Samaritan College to do that for one year. And they trained our children to do that. And then when they get into BHP or they get to working for a public, uh, private company, they're already halfway there. And now here we are, we're doing it with hygiene, but fantastic, I support it. Where are you going to get the, uh, the, uh, the trade? Where are you going to get the skilled labour? We haven't planned for the future, so we've failed. We should have kept our trade school. We should have educated our children. We should have made sure we had more trade people. We haven't done that. If you go to our Tate College and have a look, what the equipment is, well, the amazing equipment that was there for training, it's all gone. It was all sold off. Now, we're in a situation where our children have to leave our community to look for jobs outside, where you've got other towns within our district that have embraced that and are making sure that their children stay within their community. We have to do that. We are your voice. Yes, I agree we are accountable, but we are your voice. Who else do you turn to to raise your voice, you have to turn to us, your elected members, your mayor. That's what we have to do. We might be not able to make a decision, but our members of parliament can. We have to go to those people and tell them what you feel. We have to tell them what your concerns are, and they're the people that can turn it around. Thank you, Tom. Do we have other questions? We are actually making some nice time, so feel please. Thank you. Yeah, uh, my name's Ron Crouchett. Uh, my uh, question's to you, Tom. Um, you made reference to the rec centre, especially made reference to the Mount Gambier rec centre. Yep. Um, but I actually recall you a couple of years ago, um, you were dissing the Port Pirie and the Port Augusta Councils for the community centres they were sporting complexes that they were um, uh, investing in. So why the change of heart now you're just buying the boats? What was that about? The ongoing liabilities of having the uh, community sporting centres at Port Augusta and Port Pirie. I can't recall saying that, Brian. No, you did. Um, I'll take one board if that's what you say. We can't band a, a recreation centre that's leaking 20,000 litres a day, topping up the beauty, 35... Sorry, my question is, why did you need car and are you buying boats? I'm sorry, that's not true. I, I'll, I'll ask you a question, but if you're saying that's the case, that's not the case, so that's your opinion. I'm, I'm answering your question to the best of my ability, so I, I don't agree with what you just said. Um, I will tell you straight up, we can't band a we had a council previously to this one that advocated strongly to give a new jetty. We had, a, we had an engineering report that indicated that our old jetty had serious issues. Serious issues. And there were those who wanted to refurbish it at a million dollars. 
I raised the motion that we needed a new, iconic jetty. It was supported by our councillors and it was supported by the community. We didn't make the decision what sort of jetty we wanted. You made the decision. You chose around round jetty. And that jetty has put Waila on the map. That's the vision I had and that's what we created. The airport was also another vision of the previous council. Not the current council we have now, the previous council. So let's go back and see what has happened in the last four years. All those things that have come to fruition now were put there by the previous council. Our rates were only 2.3% over four years. Our rates in the last four years have gone up, and previous to that, 6.3% for six for seven consecutive years. So all I can say is you need to make sure who you put into the council has got the ability and have got the experience and the attributes to make sure we forward forward by keeping your rates down and giving you great efficiency. Please look carefully at the profiles of the candidates and choose very wisely. Thank you, Tom. And uh, Bill, you'd like to respond to that? Yes, I have to disagree with you entirely on whose vision, Tom, was the airport. It was brought upon council today by a direction from the federal government that if you wanted to continue, you, we had to put in security. It was not a vision of the council, the previous council or this council, to spend the money just to have a nice big flash new airport. It was brought upon council by the then federal government. End of story. Don't sorry. Thank you for clarifying that. No Any other questions? Way over the edge there. Thank you. Yeah. Way the microphone. Mr. Hill and current council, who have a nice jerry, who provided tourism for the last three years, a lot of money spent, but who signed many jobs. What you did in the last five years to get any jobs for tourism? Because we're talking about industry, we call it land there, doing nothing. What would you do about the city council? So I think and what would you do with the jerry? So, provide jobs. You keep people here, working. Yes, skills, hospitality, it's everywhere in the world. Must do it. Instead of sitting home, do the brands like you say. So the questions related around opportunities for hospitality and, and tourism. There might be someone who hasn't answered right down the end there. I think that's Adrian. Yeah. Hi. Adrian Thompson, thank you. Yeah, here you go, Mark. Look, I didn't know how to finish it in 1990, at 28 years old, with all the school works as a fitter. In my intake, there were 105 people. Since I finished my apprenticeship, they've leveled the apprenticeship training shop, it no longer exists. Since I finished my apprenticeship, everything went over to labour hire and casual work. And like I said before, I haven't been able to get proper stable work for years. What we need is we need to provide people with opportunities. We need businesses to step up, right, and invest in people. I've, I've applied for heaps and heaps of jobs. I've got resumes out there like you wouldn't believe. It. I've got all different types of skills from being a bricky's labourer through to as a recreational pilot. Right? I used to draw like big machines out of the company. One of the, one of the applications that I put in was the BIS as an operator. They rang me up only two weeks ago and said, oh, we see that you're a fitter. I said, yeah, no worries. They said, oh, what type of fitting are you? I'm a heavy industry fitter. Right? They trusted me to fit $50,000 bearings to the um, uh, high-pressure grinding rods. I've worked on the ISO mill shaft. Right? I've done pretty good work, but I'm not a diesel fitter. Oh, OK, well, we don't need you. I said, well, what about the operating job? They said, oh, we're looking for a machine operator. Well, I've operated 980 and 988 loaders. When did you do that? Oh, that was back before the GFC. Oh, no, we want someone with recent experience. Well, if you gave me the opportunity, I can guarantee you I would be able to do that job. Within a 12-hour period, if we say loading trains out of the mine, I've got no problem. I know that I could do that job. I'd be just as fast as anybody else by the end of the first 12-hour shift. I haven't been given the opportunity. Just to so not put that in there, I do just we'd want to keep to a minute or two. Yeah, sorry, no, I just got to finish. We've got to be prepared to invest in people and give people opportunities, which we're not doing. This is why we're having the problems with ICE. 
it's an epidemic. It's because these people sit around with nothing to do. I've got footage on my phone where I had a young guy, while I was doing this filming, he was riding an illegal motorbike. Right? And he used his motorcycle as a weapon to try and intimidate me. We need to give these people opportunities so they've got other things to do. Thank you, Adrian. Was there anyone who wanted to comment around the hospitality opportunities? Down the front, here we go. Yeah, thank you. Um, you mentioned something about the jetty and bringing in troops. Um, look, I'm all for developing that foreshore, not just with uh, a new playground or somewhere where you can just walk. I, I would like to see some of the uh, shops like summer apparel shops, sports uh, surf shops, just there on the foreshore that will encourage people to come out of the city, out of the suburbs, to the foreshore. That will bring uh, uh, people traffic, it will be a nice way of tourist people to be able to buy things there. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a whole package. It's not just beautifying it or putting a water park, it's the whole package. Tim, just you. Yeah, I Sorry. Um, I just wanted to respond to um, your question or comments around council and, and tourism. I'd actually like to pay um, tribute or respect to the current, or yeah, I guess it's still the current council, um, around the opportunity that has been really developed with the tourism, the cuttlefish tourism. Council's invested significant time and resources into developing that as a, a tourist opportunity for Wyala. They've done that in, in a partnership with state government and with private enterprise. And that has now become a world-class um, tourism opportunity, bringing literally tens of thousands of people to Wyala every year. So. Council had a major part playing in that, developing that opportunity for Wyala. Um, and, and I think that's just a great example. Um, and we have many more opportunities in Wyala to um, work collaboratively as a council with, with government and with private investment to actually, um, I guess, enhance or, or bring more opportunities and, and develop and maximise those opportunities for Wyala. Thank you, Tim. Now, we could go on for any of these questions all night for some of these. Are there other questions from our audience? Couldn't be further from the microphone, that's all played, that's okay. <laughs> sitting here who aren't quite around the rates and how much we can spend. Is there someone who might want to talk who hasn't spoken yet, who feels confident enough, otherwise I'll direct it back to our mayoral candidates. Uh, we, we collect about $15 million in rates. $15 million in rates. About $11 million that goes towards wages, which I believe is out of control. I believe we need to have locals working in that community, to invest in that community, that have some homes here, understand that community. We had an acting CEO, which I believe did an amazing job and was cost effective. We can get money from the government, federal government, but we have to put in proper and appropriate grant proposals. And that, what I mean by that is you've got a building, better, regional fund that's available. Cows in it, they got $60 million and they got their four short off the ground. That's how it can be done. And you can keep your rates down by doing it. Yes, I agree, there's some money that we have to put in. But we've allocated $700,000 to do a band-aid job on the recreation centre. 
you won't stop the leak in the laboratory. It can't be fixed, no matter what you do to it. You've got third pieces coming in from the roof into the pool. There's, there's loads of things you can't do. Seven hundred thousand dollars, one even touch the side to give it a paint job. So, Jane, I agree with you. There are ways of us getting money from state and federal government. We can do that, but we have to do it in a collective way. We have to talk to these people and explain to us what the needs and the wants of the people. Spending a million dollars on three pods wasn't the right answer. We've got a couple of these pods next to a terrible talk. We've got another pod that's put next to the cafe. Now, we've already had a cafe, as you know, we spent something in the tune of close to $500,000 in the past six years, and we didn't do it well. We've got another pod that's out at the library. We've got a perfectly good, good Mount Laura home boardroom directly behind us, unutilised. So there's another million dollars that could have been put half the side with the $700,000 plus wherever else we could do savings to give us a first class recreation. You've got to do that wisely. As I do in my business, I've been here for 40 years, I've seen 39 electrical retailers come and go. I'm still here because we don't go and spend what we can't afford to spend. So your new council have to do it wisely and efficiently. And we can make it happen, but we have to start now. Thank you, Tom. Thanks, Phil.
That's very early down here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I'd like to know about this uh, pod business. Three pods for a million dollars. I guess I could have done better than that. But it's a bit of a joke because I was, <coughs> I am the uh, current uh, vice chairperson of the uh, Mount Royal Homestead, and uh, I was working there one Sunday because we work um, every Sunday. And uh, Brian Barber said to me, "Come out the back here, Brett." And I said, "Yeah." Right. And he showed me this foundation for pieces of foundation. I said, what is that? Anyway, it turned out to be one of these pots. Um, just dumped on our property, you know, you know, my dear good? No. So, so we've got this uh, pod there now. It's still nothing open, nothing, nobody in it, you know. And, and so I thought, well, what are we going to do with this pod, you know? Like, and I found out that um, they are, the council asked somebody uh, our caretaker at the time, um, unfortunately she's died uh, since then, and uh, she said, yeah, put a pod there, it's all right. She never bothered asking anybody. So we've got this pod now, again on that property. Incidentally, the library is on the property of the Mount Royal Homestead Museum as well. Um, but that was, that was voted on, so we couldn't do much about that. But anyway, this pod, no, you know, to your question. Sorry, oh, I just want to know who organised these pods. I think uh, Phil might know um, because it's a waste of money, in my opinion. And uh, it's just, I mean, we're talking about $16 million in rates, or a million dollars of that went on three pods. And one is, I don't know what they're doing with them, but anyway. Who organised those pods, please? Somebody will figure out. I'm sure the current councillors possibly answer that. Or is it relevant? What's that? Is it relevant to what That's we're right, yeah. It might be more of a thing to chase up, um, even a question to Justin as the CEO, but it's still a valid thing, I think, overall about how money is spent. I think we can take one question before we do need to wrap this up. So, is there anyone that perhaps has an answered one, or uh, would like some final commentary, particularly from the council that hasn't said anything? Have I picked on anyone you want to hear speak? That's fine. So, one of my reminders before we thank our uh, Ladies and gentlemen, for coming here. I do want to thank everyone for attending. Um, I haven't really sat through many of these before in my life, as in this is number one, but uh, from what I can pick up, this is quite a good crowd. When I turned up at 5.30, there was a lineup, and you think that's always a good, a good sign when we have meetings at school. It's normally one person arrives one minute before we're supposed to start. So, very grateful. Thank you for the candidates themselves who have. Uh, even the ones who didn't come up with anything written down, you could clear that they had something very clear in mind about what they wanted to share in their vision, and even taking that risk to step forward to have your name put out on signs and paperwork and being sent to every household in Wyala, that's a credit to you as well. So for the group here, probably the fact that you've turned up tonight means you're probably already one of those that's taking this quite seriously. So it would be ironic to turn up tonight and forget to go home and vote. So please make sure you go home Fill out your ballot papers, make your decisions potentially based on what you've heard tonight. Remind your friends and families to do the same. Don't forget it's a postal vote, so you need to ensure it's submitted in time to reach the Electoral Commission before November 10. I had read somewhere online someone was complaining that we don't have absentee voting for this. It actually is absentee voting, so you can't go wrong. If you do not have your ballot papers, head to the council website where you can find information from the Electoral Commission on how to do. And if you are someone that needs to get a replacement uh, package, that has to be arranged before 5 o'clock on Thursday, the 3rd of November. Can we give a big round of applause for all of our So basically we're about to walk outside. As I said, you will uh, be able to chat to them, be mindful of their time that you've given up tonight and they may need to get going or go back to work or something, but I'm sure they're happy to follow up other questions. Thank you to the Wireless Secondary College for allowing such a spectacular venue tonight as well. Otherwise, please um, meander out. We do need to be out of here at 8 o'clock, so we've got 10 minutes to chat in here. Otherwise, thank you for coming.